Hello and welcome back to another video where today I'm going to make an ArtNet controller. So this controller ideally is going to communicate with my computer and then send out data to specific lighting fixtures. I don't know yet how I'm exactly going to do it. I just know that I've got some materials. Uh, I've got an ESP32 and I've got an Ethernet module and that's how that's where I'm going to start. So let's go ahead. Let's start with the components I used. The main brain of this project is an ESP32. It is a microprocessor much like Arduino. It connects to the network either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet and handles incoming ArtNet packets. The nice thing about the ESP32 is that it's fast, it's cheap and it has Wi-Fi built in. This makes it easy for us to do early tests without needing to first put an Ethernet module on it. While ESP32 is pretty great, it cannot directly speak to a DMX port, so we'll have to translate that first. We'll do that with a MAX485 module. DMX uses RS485, which is a different signal. That means that instead of flipping one wire between high and low, it flips the difference between two wires. That makes it more stable over long cables. But it also means you can't just connect your ESP32's TX pin to a DMX device. You need something in between to handle the electrical side. That's what this module does. Then you need a female DMX port. That's the actual 3-pin or 5-pin connector you plug your DMX cable into. It's just a mechanical part, but it matters. DMX requires proper grounding, a shielded cable, and a good physical connection. I use the free pin XLR socket for simplicity. The first thing I did was soldering the MAX485 module to the ESP32. There are three key connections, power, ground, and data. After that, I soldered the DMX port to the MAX485 module. Pins A and B from the MAX485 go to pins two and three on the DMX port, ground goes to pin one. That's it, three wires and you've got a DMX output. The wiring is simple, but you do have to be precise. One flipped wire and your signal either won't work or will act strangely. And if you don't ground it properly, some fixtures will flicker or not respond at all. It was time for some testing. I hooked it up to my computer and turned it on. And nothing was working. So I needed to revisit some steps. I got my multimeter out and started going after each and every connection, testing if the soldering was done right, and uploaded some test sketches for each function to see what did and what didn't work. At first I couldn't figure it out, and I spent quite some time re-soldering and even testing another socket against better knowledge. Then I went looking at the code, especially at the debug monitor. Everything kind of looked okay. And the web page I set up to change IP address worked too. When I looked closer, I saw that all the separate parts were starting, but I had placed some code in the wrong order. After fixing this, I was able to test via Wi Fi. Now it was time to add the Ethernet module, as I didn't just want to rely on Wi Fi because it can lead to instability of the signal. Here too I bumped into code issues, which I figured out after measuring the physical connections with my multimeter again. I saw the device was continuously going into a boot loop when I was using certain libraries in my code. After some digging I found out that my Wi-Fi library, which I used before for testing, wasn't compatible with my Ethernet library. It caused a crash and my device went into a boot loop because of that. I swapped ESP Async web server for Wi-Fi server and soon I actually had some signal. Now it was time to add a second universe, since I really wanted to have two instead of one, which is regular on most cheap-ish retail devices. I went ahead and duplicated my MAX485 and DMX modules, linked the power and ground to the existing setup, linked the data separately, and then did some copy-pasting and minor changes in the code to make it work. Of course, now that everything worked, I started thinking about housing. I had an existing metal box, but I couldn't fit the components in there smartly. Then I saw the little transparent box I'd used to store my project in all this time. Actually, this was the perfect size and shape, and it would be easy to cut holes into for the connections. 
I made a bit of a puzzle where everything should go. Then I went ahead and melted, sawed, drilled and sanded my way through the box until I ended up with everything in place. It is a bit funny that the whole world is deadly afraid of microplastics and here I am completely showering myself in it. The irony. In order to put everything in the box, I had to resolder a few parts since it had to go through holes, but that was easy after all the practice I had. Initially, I wanted all the connections on one end, but it was simply not possible. So I made one of the DMX boards on the back. I had mounted the ESP32 and the Ethernet module to the bottom of the box and that worked wonders. I made it so that you can still open the box to access the parts in case of anything breaking. Plus you can see all the lights, which I think looks really cool. Okay, so we finally got it. We got the Ethernet module. We have power here and then we have two universes in there that both go to the lighting. You can see it on the wall actually. And if I plug this in, we can already see. So this is universe number one, as you can see on the wall. And this is universe two. Awesome. And I might still make some changes or make it neater but for now, I am really happy with the results. Everything's kind of tidy in here and um, it cannot really go anywhere, which for me is most important. And it just has a lot of blinking lights that you can now see because it's see-through. So yeah, really happy. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and see you later.